Nikki and Vera, a quiet hero of the Holocaust and the children he rescued by Peter Sis. Nikki was born in 1909 into a century full of promise. At Nikki's school, the students were encouraged to follow their interests, whatever they were. Nikki discovered he liked mathematics, stamp collecting, photography, and fencing. The students had all kinds of pets. Nikki raised pigeons. It didn't matter what the students were interested in so long as they were interested in something. As a young man, Nikki traveled all over Europe. He worked as a banker, he learned German and French, how to ride a motorcycle, drive a car, and fly a plane. He was an expert fencer on an Olympic team. Nikki and his friends talked about politics. They worried about the situation in Europe. In Germany, the Nazi party led by Adolf Hitler was building an army. In December 1938, Nikki planned to take a skiing vacation, but a friend called. Come to Prague, he said. In 1938, Vera was 10 years old. She lived with her family in a small town near the big city of Prague. Vera was the queen of cats. She would adopt a stray whenever she found one. She loved to feed the horses that pulled the wagon for her parents' business. It was a happy childhood. Vera's family and their neighbors were proud citizens of the young Republic of Czechoslovakia. They were one of the few Jewish families in town. It made no difference. They were all friends. Vera helped her almost blind grandmother when she came to visit. Vera's grandmother remembered Vera's face by touching it. Sometimes when the family visited cousins in Prague, they went to synagogue. Vera's family spoke Czech, but if her parents wanted to share secrets, they spoke German to each other. In October, the German army marched into the border region of Czechoslovakia called Sudetenland. People afraid of the Germans ran with everything they could take. One morning, there was a new girl in Vera's class. Vera gave her an extra pair of shoes. I had no time to take anything, the barefoot girl said. In the family cellar and barn, there was suddenly extra food and clothing, just in case, said Vera's mother. When visiting Prague, Vera's mother heard about an Englishman who was helping children leave Czechoslovakia to escape the Germans. She discussed it with Vera's father, and they decided that Vera should go to England. That Englishman was Nicky. He saw that war was near and something had to be done. England would allow refugees under 17 to come if families could be found to take care of them and travel could be arranged. Nikki set up an office in a hotel in Prague. He made lists of children. He took their photographs. He found train connections. Spies kept watch. In January, Nikki returned to London. In the evenings after work, he placed advertisements in the newspapers to find foster families to take care of the children. He applied for visas and made travel arrangements. Sometimes he paid with his own money and made his own stamps. There wasn't much time. In March 1939, the German army invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia. Line after line of German soldiers marched through Vera's hometown. One of them came to the family house and said he would be moving in. He told them to stop speaking Czech. Vera's father refused. Vera vowed that she would never speak German. The day came for Vera to leave. 
she packed her clothes. Vera's father gave her a diary. He told her to write down her memories until she could return home and see them again. She said goodbye to her grandparents. She said goodbye to her cousins who were to follow her to England on a later train. Seventy-six children got on the train. Vera tried not to cry. She and the other children did not know what lay ahead, so they told stories about the lives they left behind. After three days and nights, they arrived in London. The rest of the children were picked up. Vera waited in the empty hall. Finally, her new family came. Eight trains left Prague in the spring and summer of 1939. 669 children of all ages reached London safely. On September 1st, Germany attacked Poland. That day, the ninth train carrying 250 children, including Vera's cousins, was due to leave Prague, but the borders were closed and the train never left. Nicky was out of time. He put away his records. He served in the war as an ambulance driver. He was evacuated by boat from the French city of Dunkirk as the German army advanced. Vera wrote in her diary every day. She learned a new language. She went to a new school and learned to eat new foods. The war was everywhere. She had no news from home. She hoped her parents were safe. When the war was over, Vera went back to her town. Her family was gone. Her father and mother had died in the Nazi camps. Her cousins, too. She only found the daughter of one of her old cats. She did not stay in Czechoslovakia. After four years, she returned to England. She got married and had a family. Nicky lived quietly. He helped open a school. He got married. He founded an old people's home. He never told anyone about the children. When Nicky was an old man, his wife found the records. One day, he got a phone call. Did he want to meet some people he used to know? Vera got a phone call too. Did she want to meet some old friends? Nikki was the guest on a television show. He didn't know it, but the old friends he had been invited to meet were some of the children. Vera was one of them. She sat next to Nikki. When the host told her story, she stood up. Everyone stood up. Six hundred sixty-nine children would not have survived if not for Nikki, who went to Prague and saved their lives. I was not a hero, Nikki said. I did not face any danger as real heroes do. I only saw what needed to be done. The End For a very sad and tragic time in the world, I like how this author found a story of hope and shared it with us about the hero that Nikki was. He was a very humble man. And I'm going to attach a file here that has some more information if you and your family would like to read it. I would encourage you to do so. It gives more information about Nikki and his life. I would also encourage you to look up the video 
of when Nikki was a surprise guest on the television show. It's very heartwarming. And I don't think you understand until you see his face that he did not appreciate how his act of kindness saved so, so many lives. And think about all the people who were born because of the 669 children he saved who then got married and had children and grandchildren. And there's just this whole group of people that are alive today that are relatives of these children, all because of the kindness and sacrifice of one man.